Hi everyone, this is Celine from Blue Cala Patterns. Welcome to part two of the Aster handbag uh, video tutorial. In this video, we will be assembling our uh, exterior side panels and our exterior uh, main body panels. Um, the pieces that you will need uh, for this part of the video is uh, your four corner overlay pieces, your four uh, strap connectors and the matching Peltex pieces, uh, your two side connector pieces, your faux piping pieces if you're if you're adding that, your body A pattern piece, just replacement of the strap anchor, uh, the strap anchors, the strap connectors your two uh, body A exterior pieces, and at this point, you should have your foam interfacing uh, basted to the wrong side. Your exterior side panel top C pieces with the, uh, the Peltex pieces um, added to the wrong side and held in place with your fusible woven interfacing and your exterior side panel bottom P pieces, uh, which should also have your foam interfacing basted to the wrong side. Now, before we begin, uh, you're going to also want to gather your hardware pieces. You want the two one inch D rings and your four one inch rectangle rings. And you'll also need a bit of glue or double sided tape. Um, if you haven't already uh, done this part, you need to glue the Peltex pieces to the wrong side of your strap connector pieces. So I'm going to do this first so that the glue has a bit of time to dry and set before we sew these to our body pieces. You don't need a lot of glue, just a bit. And what I'll do is I'll just I'll just set these aside while we work on our body panels and give them a chance to dry. Okay, so I'll set these aside for now. Okay, so what you'll need now are your body panels. And I'm only going to show you exactly what you need to do with one of the panels, and then you'll have to repeat all of these steps with the second panel. So take two corner overlay pieces. Make sure that they're um, a, a set of mirror image pieces. And we are going to use a bit of double-sided tape to tape these pieces to the uh, bottom corners. And I'm just gonna make sure I have my placement correct. That's right. Okay, so a little bit of tape. You could use glue if you prefer. Um, I just like tape because uh, if I need to reposition them, it's a, it's a lot easier to reposition pieces with double-sided tape. Now be careful with double-sided tape you're using. Some of them you can sew through, some of them you cannot. So um, if you're using a type that you cannot sew through, make sure you don't put it anywhere where you're, you'll be sewing. Now, 
If you're using a directional print here, make sure that it's facing this way. Uh, these are going to be the bottom corners of your bag. So uh, my fabric sort of doesn't really have a directional print, so I can. it doesn't really matter in my case. But if you are using a directional print, make sure that you're adding these to the bottom corners. So now I'm going to take this over to my machine and I'm going to go very, very slowly and I am going to sew the corner overlays in place along this curved edge. And I like to use a, a top stitch length when I sew these on, it just looks nicer. And also when you're going around corners, uh, feel free to pause and keep your needle in the down position and sort of rotate the body panel uh, so that you can sew as closely as you can. I usually try to follow a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance when I sew these curved edges. And then when I'm done sewing the curved edge, I'll just use a quick basting stitch to hold the outer straight edges in place. And I'm going to do the same for the second one. Okay, so I'm sewing on one of my corner overlays and I'm going to start from the bottom inside corner. And I am going to be using a, a top stitch length to do this. And I am going to go very slowly. And I'm trying as much as possible to follow a seam allowance of 1 8 of an inch. Unfortunately, I chose some darker colored cork, which is a bit more difficult to see. And then when I get to the, um, the top corner, I switch to basting stitch length, and then I just sew down the outer edges. I just don't want my corner overlay piece to move when I'm attaching the bottom piece and the side panel pieces, uh, which I will be doing in uh, the next video. Now we need to prepare um, two of our strap connectors. Um, so you will take two of them and you will fold in both halves of the strap portion at the top in towards the center so that the raw edges meet. And then you can tape them in place or glue them in place, whatever you prefer. I'm going to use uh, a bit of glue this time and then I'm just gonna use my clips to hold it in place uh, until the glue dries. And now you need to do the same thing for the remaining three strap connectors. So I'm going to pause the video and glue them in place and give them some time to dry before we continue. Okay, so the glue is dried on one of my connectors. So I'm just going to take my clips off and then I'm going to go over to my machine and you just want to sew the strap portion as you would in uh, any other strap. And I'm just going to start at one top corner and sew with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance down this side, then across 
and then up this side. And you're going to repeat that for uh, all four connectors. Okay, when you have the strap portion of all four connectors uh, sewn in place, you're going to take your rectangle rings and you're going to slip the strap portion through one of them. And then you fold down the strap piece and clip it in place. And we do that for all four connectors. And you'll want to make sure that you fold them all down the same amount. Now, I didn't specify exactly how much um, you should fold it down uh, because this varies a little bit based on your machine and how close you're able to sew to uh, hardware. So the, um, the rectangle ring has obviously some thickness to it and uh, some machines can't sew very close to hardware and some can. So really the important part here is that uh, when you're sewing these connectors in place is to make sure that you have a good portion of strap uh, that is folded down here so that you're sewing across uh, this, this part of the connector but also the strap portion of the connector. So I just sort of place them side by side and adjust as necessary just to make sure that uh, they're all folded down exactly the same amount. If you have some that are longer than others, it won't look as nice. This one's a bit long. Okay, I think that's that looks good. So I'll just set those aside for a minute. And now you'll need to get your body A piece with the corner overlays in place. And then place your body A pattern piece over top and take your time to make sure that it's it's positioned exactly in the right place. And then um, you need to mark the location of your strap connectors. So I don't draw out the entire shape. I just draw the, uh, the top straight edges here, the corners. And then I just make a, a little mark that shows the bottom uh, portion where it the bottom pointed portion of your connector and that will just make sure that you're uh, sewing them on straight. Now if you have a fabric pen you should use a fabric pen but I just use um, a regular pencil and then I erase the lines after I'm done. Okay. So uh, now you're going to take two strap connectors. I'm going to turn them wrong side up. And uh, you can use glue here if you prefer. Uh, I'm just going to use my double-sided tape. And you don't want to put tape where you're going to be sewing because you don't want skip stitches. I just put enough where it'll hold down the strap portion and it also goes as close as I can down to the bottom. I'm going to do the same for this one. And the reason again I'm using tape here is because I find it easier to reposition if I've, I've made a mistake or if I want to adjust. So just make sure that the connector is where I have my marks. Okay, and I press firmly. Now I'm going to go over to my machine and I'm going to sew these in place. 
I usually start at the uh, one top corner and I go across and then I sew all the way down and then at the bottom I rotate uh, the body panel and I sew up top here and then I do a little back stitching. Okay, so I've adjusted the position of my camera here so hopefully you can see a little bit better um, when I'm sewing these connectors on. Now one thing I did forget to mention, if you're sewing um, a, a sticky fabric like a vinyl, um, if you can at all possible use a walking foot. If you find your walking foot too bulky, uh, in when you're, especially when you're sewing um, at the bottom of the rectangle ring, try to get a, a Teflon foot or um, you can always put a bit, bit of tape um, underneath your foot to make it glide easier. There's a, quite a few tricks actually to sewing with vinyl. Um, but I, I'm going to use just my regular foot with this machine because it has this coating on it and it just does, I don't need the walking foot. Okay, so I am using a top stitch length of three and a half and I'm starting at the top corner. Okay, and then I keep my needle in the down position and I just rotate, lift my foot and rotate. And I sew along these edges with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. needle in the down position again and then I just back stitch a couple of times here and then hopefully you can see this now I'm going to repeat the same thing and sew uh, the remaining three connectors in place Okay, so I have my two strap connectors sewn in place and I've also added um, a rivet in the center underneath uh, the rectangle ring but uh, just below my line of stitching. Um, so now you need to repeat all of those steps that we just, we've just done to sew the remaining two corner overlays and your two remaining strap connectors in place and then we'll begin assembling our exterior side panels. We will now assemble our exterior side panels. Um, if you're not using the faux piping, you can skip this step, uh, but I'll be adding some. So all you need to do is take your faux piping piece and just fold it in half, wrong sides together, along the entire length, and then just quickly base stitch the, the raw edges at the bottom here. Uh, just quickly baste them uh, together so that the piece stays folded. If you're using fabric, then you can just, you can press it. You don't need to, uh, to baste stitch um, it. So now we need to attach the faux piping to your exterior side panel bottom pieces. Now this piece is, it, it looks almost square. So if you want to make sure that you're attaching the piping to the right edge, take your pattern piece and just compare, you'll see that there is definitely um, um, the different length on the sides. So just make sure that you've got this uh, facing the right way and there's an arrow on the pattern piece to help you do this. Then once you've figured out what your top edge is, um, you just place your piping piece along the top and clip it in place and then just take it over to your machine and baste it in place along uh, that same original line of basting stitches that you just uh, used previously to keep it folded in half. Okay, so now that I've basted the faux piping to the top edge, I'm going to take one of my um, exterior side panel top C pieces, and it's very important that you're sewing this in the right direction. So you want them to be right sides together, and you want the Peltex piece, you want the pointed end 
to be facing down towards the bottom of your, your bottom panel piece. So I'm just going to clip these layers together and then I'm going to go over to the machine and I will sew them together um, along this top edge with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, which is our typical seam allowance. And so I've now sewn uh, one exterior side panel top piece to the bottom piece, as you can see here. And now I want a top stitch. So you want to flip this piece down and you want your seam allowance to be pointing towards the bottom piece, not the top piece. And then I'm just going to top stitch through all the layers on the bottom, on the bottom here, where, or rather the top edge of this bottom piece, just beneath where the faux piping is. And like so. Okay, so I have both um, exterior side panels finished. Um, I'm just going to set them aside for a moment and we're going to sew the uh, D-ring connector straps. So to start, you should draw a line through the center on the wrong side along the entire length and do the same for both pieces. And then you're going to go over to your machine and you're going to sew uh, both halves towards the center. So you bring the raw end um, towards the center line and you're going to sew this in place as you're folding. I'm going to bring this over to the machine and show you how I sew these. Okay, I'm sewing my side connectors, just folding in one half towards the center line wrong sides together and then I am sewing one eighth of an inch from the center Now when I get to the bottom, I keep my needle in the down position and I just rotate and then I fold this half in so that it meets the raw edges of the first half. So across the bottom. And then again, I leave my needle in the down position and rotate the strap piece. And then I sew the second half, wrong sides together. And I'm sewing one eighth of an inch from the center again. Okay, so this first one is sewn. I'm going to do the same thing for the second piece. Okay, both of my side connector strap pieces are sewn. I'm going to place a piece of double sided tape. Um, on the wrong side. So that's the side where you can see your raw edges at the center. And you place about six inches of tape, leave a half inch gap at the bottom so you don't sew over the tape. I need my tape scissors. And do the same for the second one. Now I can technically sew over this tape, but I always try to avoid it. I just don't want to risk putting glue on my needle and then skipping stitches. Then you place one of your D-rings. Um, well, you place your strap through one of the D-rings, I should say. And then you're going to fold over a portion of the strap 
you want to fold over the strap one inch. Approximately this much. So I'm going to just pull off the tape backing a little bit. Fold down about one inch of my strap and then I'll just use some clips to hold this in place for now. And then you're going to take your side panel piece and you're going to mark the center at the top and the bottom just in the, the uh, this portion here, the bottom portion. Now the center should be approximately three and three eighths from one edge. Just mark it very lightly at the top and the bottom so that I'm placing my strap directly in the center, also straight. So I'm going to peel off the rest of the tape backing and align my strap first with the bottom and then with the top mark. There we go. Okay, so your strap should be uh, sticking up a little bit into the top portion of your side panel. So now I'm going to take this over to my machine and I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to sew all the way up until I get um, to see the line of stop, uh, top stitching here. You're going to sew up to that line of top stitching, then across, and then work your way down again. And when you're sewing along these edges, you use uh, a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so I'm getting close to the line of top stitching and I know that's where I want to sew across. So I'm just going to go slowly here and then rotate. Keep your needle in the down position. Okay, and then sew across down to the other side and I have a bit of a hump here, so I'm just going to use my hump jumper for a few stitches here. Okay, and then sew all the way across, down to the bottom. And there you go. Okay, so I've sewn one uh, side connector. I'm going to do the same, repeat the steps that I've just done and sew the second connector to this side panel um, and that will conclude this video uh, the next video we will put all we will sew the side panels and the body panels that we just assembled to the bottom of the bag and we will also um, assemble our top panel pieces <laughs>